Okay. When uh, solving more complicated uh, trig equations, there's really no one method for doing it. You just have to be uh, good at solving uh, equations, equations using algebra, and also you have to know some identities, okay? And the, the, the object is, the strategy is to take any trig equation we have and reduce it down to a very simple one where you have like the sine of x equals some number, or the cosine of x equals some number, and then we can solve it. So when I look at this thing, I say, well, obviously what I want to do is I want to solve for sine x. So I say sine of x uh, equals one half. Okay? That's true. Now I'm down to a very simple equation. I went from a fairly complicated one to a very easy one. And you'll run into things like this in uh, calculus one and two. You'll, you'll see some of these just like this. So you have to get some experience on, on that kind of thing. Now I say to myself, well, what angle, sine of what angle give me one half? Well, 30 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. So obviously x could be 30 degrees, or the sine is also positive. You know, all of, the, all of them are positive in the first quadrant. Only the sine is positive here. Only the tangent is positive here. And only the cosine is positive here. And second quadrant, 30 degree angle, with a 30 degree reference angle, which is 150 degrees, right? Which is 30 degree reference angle. It's going to be 150 degrees. So these are the two values from 0 to 360, which will 2 times the sine of 30 degrees minus 1 will give me 0. Same with 150, it'll work. Now they can get a lot harder than this. In fact, we're going to go over and look at one where we need identities, fundamental identities, and we need uh, uh, a lot of algebra. Okay, And we need to be careful. Okay, So I'm looking at the cosecant x plus the cotan x equals 1. And this is, looks dead in the water. How are you going to work this? Well, what we could do is change cosecant to 1 over sine x plus cosine x over sine x equals 1. We could do that, okay? Now, another thing we can do now is I can see that I can multiply every term, get rid of the fractions by multiplying every term by the sine of x. But remember, when you, you have to be careful when you do those kinds of things, when you eliminate fractions that way. You're going to have to check your answers at the end. Okay? So I'm going to multiply sine x times that, and I will get 1 plus cosine x equals sine of x. All right. So I've got this situation. Now, this looks a little better. I don't have fractions anymore, but... You know, if only I had cosine squared or sine squared, I could change that. I could use the Pythagorean identities and change and get all cosines or all sines. But I don't have that situation. So one strategy when you don't have that is to square both sides, and then things will get better, we hope. All right? So I square this side. Of course, I'm squaring a binomial, so I get 1 plus 2 cosine x uh, plus uh, cosine squared x equals sine squared x. Okay, that looks pretty good. In other words, this looks like a quadratic kind of, but the only problem is you've got sine squared there. But we can turn this into cosine squared, right? And I can go 1 plus 2 cosine x plus cosine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. Where did I get that? Well, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1, and you just solve for sine x, and this is what you get. It's the first identity uh, of the Pythagorean identities. Now, if I bring everything over to the other side and combine like terms, I mean, clearly you can subtract 1 from both sides. I bring this over to the other side, it becomes 2, etc. So I'm going to get 2 cosine squared x plus 2 cosine x um, equals uh, 0. Now that's, that's really trimmed down a lot, it's simplified down a lot. Co 2 cosine squared x plus 2 cosine x equals 0. So now let's move over here. I can see what I can do with this thing. I can factor out a cosine x, right? And if I do that, I will get uh, 2 cosine x plus 2 equals 0. Now we're getting close. I can use, if you have something times something equals 0, then I can set this to zero or this to zero by the zero product uh, theorem. So I'll set cosine x equals zero, and I'll set two cosine x uh, plus two equals zero. Now, this is in good shape. This is a simple little uh, trig equation, which we've done many times before, in fact, in the last video. And all I have to do is solve for the cosine x, and I'll get cosine x equals negative one, won't I? Okay, well, 
This is another simple one. So this is pretty easy. Where is the uh, cosine zero? Well, at, when x is 90 degrees, okay, if you, if you look on the unit circle, you'll see the x value is zero at that point. And then at uh, 270 degree, degrees is another place where the cos, if I put that in there, I'll get zero, the cosine x. Now, where is the cosine x negative one? Well, it's where the x value is negative one on the unit circle, and that would be at 180 degrees. Okay. Now, we have what appears to be three answers, but we've done two things. We've multiplied through, we've reduced, we, we reduced the fractions, and we also squared both sides. We can get extraneous roots. You should check every root. You should put 180 into the original equation. What was the original equation? Cosecant x uh, plus cotan x equals 1. You should put 180 in here and see what you get. Make sure it's defined or, and, it, and or it gives you 1. 270 in, 90 in. If you do that, you're going to find out that this doesn't work and this doesn't work. And the only angle such that the cosecant x plus the cotan x equals 1, the only angle will do that is 90 degrees.